Today is January 20th, 2019, and over the last couple of days, I've had numerous calls and discussions with traders. Everybody was pretty much asking me the same question. Well, what is the plan of action? So I thought I'd put this video together and try to share some insights that we're looking at here. So plan of action part one is actually going to talk about the short term plan. In the next video, I'm going to actually try to show you some things that we'll talk about the long term plan. What we are seeing is markets have a very high probability of being just one day away from the drop. So today being the 20th, the markets are actually closed tomorrow on the 21st. They will reopen on the 22nd. So we actually have a really good probability of opening lower on the 22nd, 23rd, 24th. Basically, we're expecting a short term pullback in the near term. And we're going to state some reason why. So now the bears, please make your confession in the comments because this is crucial if you guys make confession in the comments that is really i believe is going to help a fellow trader out there and also just basically make your confirmation whether i'm on the right track or not stating some of the things here on the next few slides so but please guys just be real okay be real because all of these videos are done with intent to help some traders that are trying to get better okay so for the last few weeks you remember the markets were dropping like crazy in December. Since then, we've posted the video that they're going to go consecutively high for 10 days plus. So they've been going high. However, you know, being a bear, especially when you're like a permanent bear, right? It's just like it doesn't you don't want to believe in this bull story. So you keep doing what? You keep shorting stocks, you keep buying puts in the expectation. Well, certainly the next day the market is going to turn around. And so you keep doing it. And what happens? The market keeps going higher the next day. So at some point you start feeling like this. So type in a comment if this looked like you maybe a week after the market just kept moving higher and you were kept buying the puts. Be real, guys, please. Okay, then days turned into weeks and finally friday after three weeks of market going higher you might have been feeling like this again be honest be honest if it's you put it in the comments you kept shorting the market it kept going higher and higher and higher basically just got out being on the wrong side of the market and as some of the comments clearly you know despite of me saying the market's going to go higher and higher and higher you know, there's still people just kept shorting the heck out of Amazon. This is what I gather most of the people finally did, or at least majority of the bears. So if you are like the hardcore bear that did not do this, okay, you know, give yourself a round of applause because just as everybody's thrown in the towel, when you saw this on a Friday, remember everything just looked green. When you turned your trading screen on Friday, the markets were gapping up higher. And that is about the time when even some of the most hardcore bears turned into the bull and turned into a bull and they said, you know what? Hell with it. I am buying calls. And luckily through the rest of the day, majority of the day, the market just kept going higher. And even after market, they ended up higher for the day. So this was the day sort of like a climax point where all the people have just been so bearish in the market they just finally said look forget it i'm gonna start buying calls i'm tired of being wrong and so when you have this sort of climax point is that typically reflected as far as the charts concerned in a final gap up higher and we're going to talk about that in just a second generally gap ups higher they are bullish but in some instances they're actually bearish and this is one of those instances and again, I'm going to shed some light on that in just a second. So if this was you, just put in the comments, yeah, I gave in, I became a bull, I turned finally from a bear into a bull on a Friday. Put it in the comments, please. As you probably know, we've been a bull since December 26 until actually Friday because we closed out of pretty much all call positions in our VIP trading group and our long-term trading group. Uh, we pretty much completely got out of calls. We actually started buying some puts. Now, it may be a bit premature, but from the standpoint of probabilities, just to make things simple, the market has been going up 17 days higher in a row. The probability of day 18 going higher is just not as good as the probability of it going on day 10 or 11 or 17. So from the standpoint of probabilities, what could happen next? That's exactly what we're going to check out in just a second. 
And at this point, you know, the general rule is the probability of going higher consistently in that sort of fashion, like we've been going higher for the last 17 days, is just it's greatly diminished. Okay, so we're still bullish overall on the market, meaning overall, you know, we believe the market will move substantially higher. But more on that in the part two of this video, where I'm specifically going to share some charts and um, and ideas about why the market could actually be going higher. All the way from July. Now, I will give you a warning if you're still a hardcore bear. You may just avoid that video entirely because it may give you a heart attack. But for the purpose of this video, we are short term bears. Now, notice we're not expecting a crash, we're just expecting a pullback. So, in this video, we'll discuss five reasons why the markets have a high probability of making a pullback January 21st. Now, I put the 21st here because the markets are open worldwide. So we may see a pullback starting to initiate in some markets in Asia, Europe, and which ultimately will result in the markets opening lower on uh, Tuesday here in the United States. And clearly, there is a probability that the markets could open just and go sideways. We may not get any significant moves in either direction, right? But ultimately, on the 23rd and 24th, I think we are going to move slightly lower from where we have been. Okay, this is how the chart looks on S&P in the last few months. Just to get some better understanding, okay, this is how the chart looks in the last few months of 2018. Okay, let's check this out. Okay, so there's the def cross. We're going lower. Uh, first bottom right here. Second bottom right here. Okay, with the exception, guys, I don't know if some of you caught that. That was like a little tricky slide right there. But with the exception that this was not a chart of 2018. That was a chart of October, November 1990. Whoa, why are we looking at the 1990? Amazing. And check this out. So... S&P 500, November 12, 1990. So that's where it was. I'm going to show you the recent circumstances on S&P, which just incredibly, the way they resemble, I mean, they're not identical, right? But just if I didn't tell you guys, I mean, and again, be honest. I mean, if you've been following the markets, if you're new, I can understand that you may not notice the resemblance here. But, you know, we're clearly off maybe on the chart by a month and a half. But if you were to substitute this part with October 2018, if you were to substitute this with November, if you were to substitute this with December, you pretty much would get the same chart. Um, so the key things that we're observing and why did we actually pick this time frame, 1990, um, August 1990, September 1990, October and November 1990, because this there's a few criteria that is met on this chart and some of the criteria insanely coincidentally almost identical okay now again we're not trying to compare the market conditions and the way the markets were we're not trying to compare the interest rate environment we're simply making the observations in the chart so what we've done went back we have identified uh, time frames in the United States uh, market where VIX was trading at a level of 36 and so this was the market environment where not only the VIX was hitting the levels of 36, but also we had a very strong resemblance in the chart pattern, meaning um, I'm going to fix to show you the resemblance here. But first understand what we're looking at as far as the criteria, right? So criteria one, the bottom uh, happened right shortly after the death cross. Uh, the pattern looks such where the markets uh, basically begin dropping a sharper drop. Uh, they bounce higher, they make another sharper drop, establishing a bottom. Uh, at the same time, uh, after that, they uh, begin to bounce all the way above the blue line, right? So the similarity is even down, and the time frame also matches. The only thing that doesn't match is like the months, right? So very interesting point. One of the criteria we were, we were selecting for that was the observation and divergency on the VIX. We have the same divergency on the VIX as, as we uh, uh, as we're actually having now. So the first time the market drops to a new low, um, the uh, RSI is at the bottom. And then the second time it drops, uh, the RSI does not go lower. And after that, essentially, the market rallies all the way above the 50-day moving average. And sort of, you know, in this chart, it's not a gap higher. But you'll see what happened in this circumstance, you know, in January 2019 uh, in just a sec. 
the MACD indicator also in the solid uptrend. So how does this compare to the current circumstances? So not identical again, but similar to a bottom pattern here in the last few months. We see in the same basically formation as far as the pattern of the chart. We're observing the same bullish divergence on the RSI where the second leg lower that the market makes, the RSI does not fall. It pretty much stays at the same level. It's supposed to fall, which indicates a bullish divergence here. The markets go and look where we are right now. Look, we're just exactly above this blue line. MACD indicator is bullish. And look, even the RSI, look, we're literally like within three points away on the RSI. So let me take you back uh, to the 19 diet. Just take a look at this one more time. Um, 59.95 on RSI, bullish divergence, death cross, followed by a lower uh, low, establishing a bottom, bullish MACD, pretty much identical, right? Again, the only thing that is different here is we're substituting some months, so clearly the initial drop happens right here October. Um, and then the market rallies a little bit, falls in December, but everything else is pretty much the same. So these are the conditions that we were selecting to make this observation. If you're really trying to figure out, sometimes it really pays to go back in the history, try to identify some similarities in the, in the charts, charts patterns, but uh, clearly we're not just looking at the chart pattern here, like there's a number of other conditions that I'm at at the same time. So where does this take us? The only logical question that if you trade the market should be in front of you right now is what actually happens next in 1990. And here's the chart. This is what happens next. So remember in the previous chart, I was showing you this area right here where the market basically breaks out about the blue line. Okay. Now, as you can see, right after that big break happens, this big white candle, what happens? We're starting to go just slightly sideways and then overall moving lower and we're touching back to that blue line so we're not talking about a huge drop we're talking about a pullback and as you can see the pullback at the time happens over the course of about you know seven days so i'm thinking we can probably have like a four to seven day pullback potentially and clearly some of these days they do start in the green so just because they start in the green don't automatically think that that's going to be a green day because a lot of times like on this candle right here um, on November 13th, 14th, it does reverse and finish lower. Next day is red. So we're going to have a bit of a mix, but living more basically out of the next seven days, about four or five being lower overall, but not significantly lower. Why? Because volatility actually spikes a little bit, but does not spike that much. And then it comes back down again. So after the following week, if we were to follow the pattern established in 1990, we're actually going to go higher from there. And uh, within uh, literally a few weeks, we're actually going to hit this level, the orange line, the 200 moving day average. What can we learn from this? Again, let's review the criteria again that we are watching to make some of these observations. So why did we look at this time frame, um, 8990? Because we had a set of criteria that we're observing. Actually, there's four criteria. The VIX was numerically close to December high in 2018, which was 36. The charts resemble similar pattern and we had similar bullish reversal developing from the divergence on their RSI and price action. And number four, we had death cross right before we actually hit the bottom. And so here's the similarities in the VIX, right? So with the market that was establishing the low, here was the VIX in 1990. Notice the interesting thing, right? So after the VIX hits 36, where does it go? It goes to a level um, roughly here on this chart of about 20. So not perfectly matching, but again, Interestingly, the after sets that low from 36 to 20, it bounces to about 26 area. How does that compare to the current market conditions? Current market conditions, okay, so we hit in 36, we're now at 18. And if the pattern of the 1990 comparison was to follow, we are expecting the bounce and more on that in uh, just a second. If you're trading options, there's generally three most important things to understand when it comes to trading options, especially if you implement a simple directional strategy with trading weekly options. So clearly, number one, you have to understand the direction when something is moving. And ideally, you want to avoid situations when something goes higher, then falls the next day, goes higher, then falls. Because what does that do? That decays the value of your options. Number two is understand the magnitude of the move. A lot of guys actually that have interacted in the last 48 hours, uh, they have actually been pretty good with picking the direction, but the main issue, they have not been selecting the right strike prices and therefore they've even been even 
with the correct direction, been taking small losses, or they have not really been getting momentum. It's important to make certain observations when it comes, when you're selecting your price, to understand what could be the magnitude of the move, calculate that ahead of time. And number three, clearly, is timing. For example, if the market turns temporarily sideways on Tuesday, okay, not to take any side of the position, but really just wait till Wednesday to put in your trade once the trend is confirmed to the, you know, to the, if you see further developments on the VIX, if it creates the uptrend pattern, then jump in and establish the position there. So all of that makes a difference because as you guys know, if you've been trading options, they decay every day. So timing is everything. Keep these three things in mind as we're trying to go through some of the things discovering here, the probabilities of events on the charts. First, very important thing to understand is this, at times, Bullish gaps are actually bullish, but then there are times when they're actually bearish. So how do you make a distinction between the bullish gap ups higher and distinguish them from the bearish gap ups? Well, certain conditions have to be met again. I'm going to run through them real quick and I'm going to show you specifically on the chart. What does that really mean and equate to you and how does it actually look? So condition number one, when bullish gaps are actually bearish, condition number one is this. Gap up higher happens after a continued sequence higher for about 4 to 15 days. Number two condition, when market trades under or close to its 50-day moving average or 200 moving average and is trying to retest these levels on the way higher. Condition number three, when both 50-day and 200-day moving average are in a downtrend, often after death cross formation, working their way higher. Condition number four, when rally higher is preceded by a severe drop of anywhere from 5 to 25 percent in a short time frame of 30 to 60 days. Condition number five, when the drop lower ended with the last gap lower before the rally began. And finally six, when VIX showing signs of a trend reversal. Okay, so let's take a closer look. Chart number one, S&P 500, January 18th, 2019. It shows us the way the market closed on a Friday. So here's what we got. Very interesting observations, okay? Look at this gap up higher right here in November. Do you see that after the gap up higher, you see this huge white candle right here. It stops just shy of this blue line, which is the moving uh, a 50 day moving average and look what happens on the next day you have one two three four five days lower now notice the pre-existing condition right before this gap up higher happens we get one two three four five days higher overall even though there is a, a red candle there um, now interestingly to observe is look at this gap up lower that was preceding before the market hit this low point right here so this gap up higher is the exact mirror, in a way, you may have to use your imagination just a bit, of this gap lower right here. Now, the same circumstance and events repeat themselves one more time. This time, however, this gap up higher is getting just above the blue line and almost coincides with this death cross. Look, the pre-existing condition, one, two, three, four, five, six days higher finished with an exhaustion gap higher. After that, what do we have? One, two, three, four, five days lower, taking a little break and significantly lower for multiple days. Okay, notice the gap down right here, which was created before the market hits low. It is the exact mirror image of the gap up higher. And what do we get here, guys? Do you see this gap up lower before the market hits the bottom on the 24th? So this was the final gap lower pretty much the next the following day we get a reversal now we got actually 17 days higher look at this gap up right here if we follow the pattern that was established on this chart then we will discover that this indeed is the mirror image of this gap lower and this confirms our case on the s p chart that we have a high probability of the next move lower. Now, if you study this case right here, for example, in November, you have this huge white candle followed by this tiny candle where things just almost don't move. So what that tells us that 
the market may go sideways without really making any big drops on like a Tuesday when it opens. And so there is a probability, there is a good probability of it doing that. There is also a probability of it gapping down quite significantly if we follow this right here. But it is clear that breaking out higher could be a challenge. But if it does break out higher, that tells us that we're in a totally different environment as much as it resembles here. So however, the probability of that is not great because the resembles here and the evidence that I've given, it's quite astonishing. So let's take a look to see if we we'll get a confirmation on NASDAQ. So here's the chart of NASDAQ January 18, 2018. Surprise, surprise, same thing, exhaustion gap followed by a few days higher, reversal, lower, right? Lower followed by a few days higher, same thing. Look, gap lower, followed by multiple days higher, exhaustion gap higher, reversal. They all happen right around this blue line. Can you guys see them? So now we just got in the way just above the blue line right here on NASDAQ as well. Everything else is just like that picture I was showing you earlier from 1990. Dow Jones, January 18, 2019, identical, right? So here's your gap higher, moving for a few days higher. Final gap higher, followed by one day sideways, followed by a bigger series of drops. Same thing right here. Gap lower, followed by a series of days higher. Final gap up higher. Signifies climax, reversal after that. Boom. Last. The exhaustion. Actually, the climax gap lower right here, followed by 17 days higher. Mirror image of the gap that was created here was just done on a Friday. Boom. Everything is confirmed. Okay, so now each example of the last gap up higher before the drop coincided with purple dots on the VIX. Okay, so in other words, the three instances that I have just demonstrated to you in all three indices, the S&P 500, the NASDAQ, and the Dow, when they did this gap ups higher in the last day, they coincide with this purple dots on the VIX. So let me just take it to the final chart. Just make sure you guys understand exactly what we're talking about. So these uh, three, okay, I've got two selected here. So let me show you the three right here. So this three purple dots was the final day higher in NASDAQ each time. They are portrayed on the chart of VIX that I'm trying to show you right here in the purple dots right here. Notice how consistent they have been. So in this case, we're not touching 16. We're getting maybe to a 17 level right here on the VIX and then VIX goes higher. Those of you that know that VIX has the inverse relation with the market. So when VIX goes higher, the market start dropping. So second time we visit 16 right on this orange line, which is the 200 day support level. We got a bounce. Third time we're getting a bounce higher. So notice what has actually been happening on Friday, as everybody turned from a bear into a bull, we are actually getting a reversal candle right over here, which tells us that maybe just like an instance right here back in October, maybe we're not just going to touch the 16, maybe just bounce right from over here and move higher on the VIX. So if the VIX moves higher, then by definition, the market should start falling, not crashing, just falling, right? So. Reason number two why we believe the market is going to make a pullback just short term, right, is we're observing divergence between VIX and the market. So typically we'll say the market, just please understand, we're just generally talking about S&P 500 because it's kind of a better representation of the market overall, comprised of more companies, opposed to, for example, looking at like Dow Jones, which is only 30 companies, right? So the divergence, what do we mean by that? That means that when market goes higher, VIX is supposed to do what? VIX is supposed to go lower. So VIX on this chart is represented in pink and the S&P 500 in this uh, sequential line of, uh, you know, red and uh, predominantly green, right? So there it is. The market goes higher on Thursday. VIX is doing exactly what it's supposed to do. It's dropping as the market goes higher. Now, notice that we're getting an interesting situation for the majority of Friday, January the 18th. And specifically what we're looking at is, look at this, the market is going higher. So what is the VIX supposed to do? It's supposed to be doing this, supposed to be going lower. But look, the market is going higher and so as the VIX. 
which tells us that this could be an early sign, an indication that the market could be turning the other direction soon. Now, by observing this, look, I mean, S&P 500 up 40, almost 50 points on a day. You would not think, okay, that VIX would be going higher on such a day. VIX should be dropping. As a matter of fact, based off the action, 41, 44 points, right, higher on, on, on S&P 500. VIX should be taking a nosedive. It should have been hitting 16 that day, maybe even breaking under 16. But what is going on? We see exactly the opposite of that. So this is the reason number two, why we think there's a higher probability of a pullback now in the market. Reason number three, divergence between leading stocks in the market. Let's take a look. What do you think Amazon typically does when the markets go higher? Well, Amazon is considered to be one of these high beta stocks. High beta stocks generally go into a large proportion as far as percentage basis in relation to the market, meaning that if, if S&P 500 moves up uh, at 2%, you would expect Amazon to go up by 3%. If S&P 500 goes up by 1%, Amazon would go up, let's say, by 1.6%. And this is pretty much what we're seeing, right? So the correlation between S&P 500 and Amazon is supposed to be moving in the same direction. So again, uh, in this case, we have Amazon uh, represented on this chart in green and in red line and we have S&P 500 in the pink again don't confuse it with the VIX we're looking at S&P 500 correlation to Amazon and vice versa so basically we're saying generally Amazon and S&P 500 is supposed to move in the right direction in the same direction but look what we're getting Friday the markets are going significantly higher and what is Amazon doing it's finishing at the lows of the day. It's not supposed to be doing that, right? So Amazon finishes at the lows of the day as market finishes at the high. We're getting another sign of a divergence. So this is sign number three. So now let's take a look at Facebook. Wow, look at that. It's doing exactly the same thing as what Amazon. Facebook generally goes, you know, with the exception of situations clearly when Facebook has issues that directly pertain to the company, but overall, all things being the same, no crazy bad news being reported in the particular day on Facebook, it will move in the same direction with SPX. And in this case, you can see the direction was clearly correlation was as normal, right? Market goes higher, Facebook goes higher. Look what happens on a Friday. Again, we're seeing a sign, a signal of a divergence here. When markets are going higher, Facebook drops. And why we're looking at Facebook, Amazon, well, because they're the FANG stocks, right? They're, they're the everyone's favorite and they, they had a pretty good run so generally when the market reverses institutional investors they run and they hunt best companies which would be Amazon and, and Facebook and Google and so on so similar what are we seeing on Google as normal on Thursday we have the same positive correlation here we got an inverse correlation all of a sudden we got a divergency market moves higher Google finishes not at the highs it should, but it's actually dropping towards the lows of the second part of the trading day. Number four, we're also observing the divergence between volume and price action in stocks that recently have moved up substantially. So at the same time, the hidden resistance level. So it would be one thing, guys, to observe, okay, there is a volume divergence, and sometimes stocks are able to go higher on lower volume. However, they cannot do it forever. Now, this becomes especially dangerous when we have a situation where divergence on the volume, meaning stocks are going higher on lower volume, coincides with areas where stocks are hitting resistance levels. So let me demonstrate specifically what I mean by that. Okay, so here's a chart of Goldman Sachs. As you know, we've had some very successful trades on Goldman recently in our both of our long-term alerts group and VIP groups now divergence plus resistance level check this out look how clear this is okay so here's the level of 200 202 it's a pretty strong level of resistance because this is where Goldman Sachs was dropping severe volume that's where it made the gap lower it looks like it's trying to close the gap but generally closure of the gaps fails when it happens on lower volume so look yes it had this big move when it moved 17 bucks that's uh, where it was hitting our target 195 Consecutively, two days after that, look what happens to the volume. 
it drops off significantly. So generally speaking, stocks do not close gaps for real on lower volume. Okay, another example, JP Morgan, okay, divergence plus hidden resistance level. Look, same thing, resistance level right here. This is where it gapped down. It's exactly on the same level, about 104 and some change. As it moves higher in the last few days, what happens to the volume? Goes lower. That's your volume divergence right here. Citigroup, divergence plus hidden resistance. Okay, here's your resistance level right here. Actually climbed just above it. Super bullish move, right? But look on, look what's going on to the volume simultaneously. All these multiple days higher. The stock is getting exhausted. The volume is decreasing. This move higher is likely to turn into a move sideways opposed to a continuation of a move higher here. Okay, Amazon, because you may be thinking, okay, well, why are you showing us all these, you know, stocks that, you know, recently just been going higher? I mean, they can't be buying them forever, can they? Okay, well, the same thing on Amazon. Hidden uh, a divergence and a resistance level at the same time. It's a little bit more vivid on Amazon, and certainly now we cannot say it's just one group, like the financials that are having the divergence in the volume. We got the key leading stock right here making divergence in volume as well. So here it is, Amazon from 13, 1400 level all the way to 17. By the way, it did hit our target level 1705. Actually moved a little bit above that Friday to about 1716 after it finished the day at 1696. So the important observation is this. Amazon, while the market moves higher like crazy, right? It actually finishes at the lows of the day. And it coincides with this resistance level. Look at last time. Look how consecutive and high, highly predictable these black candles are. So last time, same level. They all coincide with this 200-day moving average, right? So boom, it runs up here. What happens? It falls, make another effort, falls again. Same level right here. Last time, 1705 drops again. If you're wondering how did I pick that 1705 level, it's because, guys, if you study the charts, the information is here. You just got to understand where to look for it, okay? So... Now we've got the divergence on the volume here. The stock moves higher, hits the same level, 1705, roughly bounces below, finishes below this critical level of the 200-day moving average as the volume doing what? The volume, we got clear divergence on the volume at the same time, coincides with this double top on the accumulation distribution, finally make just a little tick lower. Observation number five, or reason number five, why we believe the market could actually make a pullback just short term. So indexes worldwide are also hidden resistance levels. This is one of the advantages of being a subscriber to our alerts or VIP service is you will actually get some information like what is actually going on overseas that could be impacting the markets here in the United States. And so consistently look at many different uh, charts of indices that are trading worldwide. So take a look at Germany, right? So here it is, the resistance level in Germany Hidden the resistance level, same exhaustion gap higher like here in the United States. Look how consistent this is. And notice what does Germany do every time it hits that blue line or just slightly above it. Look how consistent it is. We're still in a downtrend in Germany. Okay, so every time it gets slightly above that blue line, what happens? It drops. Slightly above the blue line, it drops. Slightly just touching this blue line, drops. Hidden the resistance level. Okay, so from the standpoint of probabilities, is the probability higher that Germany is just all of a sudden going to break out here and hit this level of 12,000? Or is the probability, considering this historical data right here, going to be such that Germany could move sideways to lower? I think the latter could have a higher probability in this particular case. If Germany is not enough, let's take a look at Hong Kong. Hidden resistance level. Last time we hit that level, what happened? Gap down. Gap down. And look how consistent this is. This top moment. On this chart happened right after what? Right after this exhaustion gap higher. Remember all these reasons that qualify this. Actually, if you were to observe this and study that, all of them are present right here on this chart. Okay, if Hong Kong is not enough, let's take a look at Japan. Okay, so each time Japan gets closer to this blue line, it pulls back. Here's your resistance level right here. Here's your resistance level right here. So it used to be the resistance level here, guys. So look. One, two, three, four. So the resistance level was about 22 and a half. Now the resistance level is about just like under 21. So if it doesn't break above 21, like tomorrow, the 21st, if it doesn't break above 21 on Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, chances are the probabilities are such that the indices in Japan are likely to go sideways to lower. The probability of that is higher than the indices in Japan actually going higher. The key takeaway and the plan of action 
Here's the plan of action, guys. What I want you to look, focus on is three things. Since Amazon is a leading stock, and we we'll also use it like as a leading indicator in a way of what some of the technology stocks or what some of the retail stocks could be doing. So in this case, here's the big if. I don't want you to just jump in at a bunch of trades on Tuesday. I want you to observe, A, what is Amazon doing? Is it actually breaking above this orange line on high volume? In other words, you want to see a significant volume coming in an Amazon stock as the price action moves above this 1700 level. If that does not happen, and you can see Amazon is trading at a really light volume and it is hesitant to break above that 1700 level, what do you want to do? Possibly you want to take a small position, but if you're really searching for a very high probability trade, I would actually stay away from trading it on Tuesday. I would wait till Wednesday, and if Wednesday you get a second move lower in Amazon, that would make it for a high probability trade. Chances are at the same moment you will notice that the volume, like one of these red bars, are actually going to exceed one of these gray bars. And that would be a great confirmation for high probability trade, truly stating that Amazon is at least taking a pause before making another run at this level of 1705. And chances are it could easily retract. Look, even if 3% retracement on Amazon backwards is going to produce a move about 50, 60 bucks. Um, so if you're buying puts, that could make for a trade. Now, again, you certainly don't want to do that. You really want to observe what is actually going to take place on Tuesday. And if whatever action happens on Tuesday, if it breaks above on high volume and the follow through on the Wednesday takes place, you want to buy calls. If the follow through does not take place, then indeed everything we have discussed in the video is true and you want to buy puts. Okay. You don't want to just observe Amazon to make that trading decision. However, you definitely want to take a look at B. If the next candle on the VIX is higher. So we've discussed that every time VIX has gone to the 16 level, what did it do? It bounced. And so this bullish reversal in the divergence that we pointed out earlier clearly states that it could certainly have a pretty high probability of doing so. But we got a big if. Why do we have a big if? Because we want to get the confirmation. So if you try to put a high probability trade, what should you do? Well, number one, on Tuesday, you should observe if the next candle on the VIX is going to be higher, okay? And at this point, you may want to establish a small position. Now, you may want to completely avoid doing that. You want to wait just for an entirely 100% confirmation because if the VIX is going to move higher on Tuesday and higher on Wednesday, it tells you that there is indeed a trend reversal that's been happening here. Similar to the trend reversal, we were able to identify when we posted the video at the end of December saying that the market is about to go consecutively multiple days higher. And this is exactly what happened. So if we're seeing two bullish white candles on the VIX on Tuesday and Wednesday, that gives you a high probability trade to short pretty much any stock that has gone up substantially higher, like Amazon or Google. They will all be good targets if you're observing what we discussed just now right here on the Amazon chart which is condition A, you want to observe that we're discussing here in the VIX, which is condition B, and condition C. If next candle on S&P 500 is sideways or lower. So clearly, if you're, you know, trading spies, or, you know, you want to observe that the next candle on S&P 500, if you want to get bullish, you want to give it some time and really confirm that this is not a bearish gap up higher. So if we get a confirmation that markets are going higher and higher volume, then forget everything we discussed in this video, right? But if indeed I think the higher probability and everything that was stated here points to a higher probability of the market moving sideways and lower, then you want to wait till the next scandal on S&P 500 is going to go sideways. Confirm that Wednesday the next scandal is going to be lower. You're going to begin to start closing this gap, and that's going to make it for a high probability trade. Um, again, the three important things to understand when trading options, specifically, especially directional weekly options, is number one, to build a strong probability case for what direction is going to take place. Number two, the magnitude of the move, which is going to help you determine the strike price. And number three, the timing. Clearly, again, as I was trying to demonstrate throughout this video, that Oftentimes, you don't want to just jump out. You certainly don't want to jump out with a huge position. What you want to do is look at the probabilities, figure out 
the conditions that have to be met in order for you to actually move on with your trade. And it's often a really good idea to just stay or step into the trade. If you'd like to learn more about this, talk about all of those things. If you want to get more proficient as a trader in executing properly in all of these three key things when it comes to trading directional options, okay, definitely want to take action. Check out our charts and divergence course if you haven't done so already. And definitely the 13 markets move formula, which helps you be more consistent in understanding on which days you should day trade and on which days you should swing trade. Guys, with that being said, thanks for watching. I wish everyone great success. Take action and make it happen. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Thank you.